here we have a mock rib or fold over hem. At a request for a mock rib hem for the sock video. But I am not uh, someone who likes mock rib hems. But I'm willing to demonstrate it for you. What I learned how to do is you put your machine into a uh, one by one configuration, but you bring forward the ones that you want to put on the cast on comb. So you bring those forward, you lock in your cast on comb. If you don't have a locking one, you got to hold it up. But you got to hold it up slightly, um, pulling slightly towards you so that those teeth go behind the, um, the brushes on your sinker plate. I'm just going to do this with my um, extremely bright orange yarn. I'm just going to lock it into the cast on comb. Take a deep breath. My cast on roll will be tension six. Unlock your comb. Bring your yarn out front. Probably need three. I'm going to use three of these claw weights. I learned this from Agnes Donnelly, so buckle up. This is going to be fun. So this was row one. I've done no e-wraps, nothing spectacular. I'm not putting any other needles into work. Whatever the pattern said for ribbing, you're going to do twice as many for mock ribbing. So, for example, if it said 20 rows of ribbing, you're going to do 40 rows of mock ribbing. And that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to knit 40 rows. I will reset my tension, however, to 4. That is 40 rows of mock ribbing. I'm now going to remove my claw weights. I am going to flip over my cast on comb and bring it forward. So I'm flipping it towards me and bringing this forward. So I have flipped it from teeth facing me to teeth away from me. I'm now going to put my claw weights back on, but not where you think. I'm going to put a claw weight on the end of the left side and the right side. I am now going to bring forward the stitches that I'm going to cast on to. I'm holding my cast on comb upward. I'm going to bring these just a little more forward. So you can see and I'm just going to hang the loops 
works really well. Uh, I gotta move you guys a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. One second, I gotta move these back a little bit. Okay, back a little bit. Moving the camera. Okay, we'll see if this helps. So I have the loops in between here. These ones, I'm going to hang them on there. Sometimes I use a little bit of weight in the middle here, which I think I'm going to do. So through the back. Really easy if you don't have a ribber on. Through the back. I'm going to just put that there. So it pulls it down a little bit. Okay. So I have all of these holes. And I am just putting the stitches on by pulling down slightly sometimes you, you get a little pushnicky now I have a couple that are not behaving so I'll just remove it again I'm going to put this on this side instead. Okay, so it's holding it down. What you can do is you can move those forward. You line up the hole. Because I'm demonstrating, that's why it's not working very well. Okay, I have just a couple that are not behaving. I'm just going to bring them forward and I'll fix them manually. Okay, removing the cast on comb. That one was, that one was the wrong one. That one split the yarn. Grabbing 
this one. Okay, double checking. Everything looks really good. We're gonna bring these all forward. Back up to my working tension. And now I'm going to knit a couple rows to lock it in. And that is a very simple mock rib fold over him. There you go. And it looks very, very nice when, when you uh, followed the instructions. You can see that you've plugged all your holes. The end product, it's fast. Um, you don't need a ribber, and you're ready to knit your actual sock. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up for one by one ribbing, and we're going to get started on our actual socks. So I hope that helps you guys with your fold over hems. Whatever your ribbing is, times it by two, do the fold over this way, and you'll never have an issue. Now we can knit some socks. This is this week's socks.